stuff like that. Um, what led me to the Liber Liberty New Movement was ultimately this realization of how destructive the uh, systematic use of aggressive practices is on the human consciousness. Uh, so in understanding that, it really led me toward uh, pursuing alternatives. And that's what led me to these beautiful people around me. Um, so further introductions? Hi, I'm Adam. I uh, moved up here a couple of years ago just to see what all these crazy libertarians in one place could accomplish. And uh, since then, I've tried a few different uh, tactics, I guess. I tried a little bit of civil diss and got thrown in a cage for a while. Um, it didn't seem all that effective, but you know, in, in some ways I think it was a positive experience. Um, but now I'm interested in trying another way to achieve the goals that I want to see, which is namely a, a free and just society. My name's White. I moved here from Houston three years ago. And something that I've been looking forward to for years has been living more naturally. Um, hard work and living in the earth, on the earth, and growing food. And um, <clears throat> I've looked at alternative means of living and building, and it all looked very interesting. And, um, so Saba's definitely going to be the way to go for, for that. Also, I look at it as a, a chance when forming a community like this to choose your family. I like these people, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Autumn, and this is Helena. Um, I'm a, an aspiring herbalist and midwife. Um, I kind of came to meet all these beautiful people here and uh, and and share a vision of community. Um, thanks to my daughter, actually, she was a pretty big push in the direction of finalizing my aspirations for freedom and, and learning, um, trying to discover an alternative way of living because I knew that the way I wanted to be a mother to her um, wasn't compensated by the current system. So um, just um, so exploring new ideas on community and what it means to be a parent, what it means to, to carry a child, and what it means to give birth to a new life, and, and really exploring um, some new frontier on those subjects is big interest. Yeah, that, that too. <laughs> um, so generally what you're probably hearing from us at this point is this idea that we came together with an understanding that our energies are probably most effectively utilized by coming up with a way of building an alternative society from the ground up uh, that really is going to meet our needs. Um, in doing so, we kind of established a few different goals that we had for what this community or intentional communities in general could ultimately strive for. Uh, the three goals, first, to be able to meet human needs. Um, so that is needs related to you know, our biological needs, related to our uh, mental needs, related to our social and spiritual needs. Uh, an intentional community that was based in trying to create a healthy society would look to try to meet those needs for humans. Uh, the second goal that we established was that it would strive to promote the wellness of all. Not just the wellness of one individual, not just the in just people. We would promote the wellness of people, animals, the earth, plants, everything. And then the third goal that we figured um, in thinking about this idea of intentional community was to do it in such a way that the community operates in a way that's acceptable to the current system. That it wouldn't involve bringing aggression on us by the system, and it wouldn't involve our contributing back to the aggression towards anyone else. Um, so those were the three primary goals that we um, figured we would want in the community and what we would want to promote for societies being created like this in general. 
So going back to those goals and that first goal specifically, this idea of meeting human needs. Well, what needs? There's so many different ones. How do we look at this? And we really were able to kind of boil it down to five, five categories of needs. The first need that we were able to identify was this need for feelings of safety and connection with one another. And in trying to figure out how a society or community could meet that need, it really became um, pretty clear that the non-aggression principle would need to be followed. Uh, so that would be that general understanding that across the board, people would not be engaging in any types of force, coercion, or fraud against one another, that everyone would be um, participating voluntarily in this society. The second need that we had identified was related to people's needs for a home and for healthy foods. With regards to kind of what we see right now um, with how, to, how the home system works is that, you know, all the properties don't. So in order to avoid homelessness, you gotta get into some sort of contract for a rent or a mortgage or something like that, and you're obligated to pay in order to have this home because other people own the land. Um, and we felt like people should be afforded a roof over their head and food, regardless of a monetary contribution, uh, that any type of contribution could be enough to, to warrant having a roof over your head and food in your belly. Uh, the idea of just a healthy food system, I think, you know, can be understated in a way when we think of just how unhealthy food systems can actually be. Um, so when we were thinking of healthy foods, healthy building for the earth, it was also this understanding that it's not just about the people, it's also about every aspect of wellness for, for the earth, for the plants, for the animals. And Evan, you wanted to talk a little bit more about that piece, right? Yeah, sure. Um, one thing that we're gonna try to focus on at Saba is um, building in a way that's natural and sustainable. So methods like uh, straw bales, straw bales for insulation, and and adobe as far as like thermal mass, and designing the structures in a way that they take advantage of this free energy that's raining down on us every day, the sun, and designing them to be passive solar and, and active solar too. And um, so it would be, that's the idea, is putting windows on the southern side, that's the simplest thing. Building a greenhouse out over the southern side of your house to catch and store all that energy and to grow plants, like right outside your front door. And, um, and then using the earth sheltering as far as the cooling aspects of the earth. It's a very constant temperature, just a little ways down. You can build a root cellar there and you've got this, you know, your refrigerators can run in a lot lower um, energy settings. And uh, another thing would be permaculture, which we defined as working with rather than against nature and uh, kind of observing nature's patterns and emulating them. Like, I guess a way to put it is, it's not so much mimicking nature as figuring out um, what blueprint she's using and then using it in, in the production, in the design of food production systems. So like <coughs> an example would be uh, seeing that in, in like a forest ecosystem, you know, nobody goes in and tills up the forest floor, but there are microorganisms, there's mycorrhizal fungi and rhizobial bacteria that are performing beneficial um, functions in the, in the soil. And if you let them do their work, if you don't go in like, tear it up and throw a bunch of petrochemicals on it, it actually works. Imagine that. If you add organic material on top, you can can grow food that's healthy and doesn't doesn't contribute to you know destruction of the earth. Okay. Yeah. Um, another thing I guess would be um, it's focused on biodiversity, so that would include those those uh, sorts of organisms. And the goal would be a garden that requires little to no ongoing human maintenance. So designing systems in a way that like you grow a, a common complementary planting thing is uh, three sisters, corn, beans, and squash. But there's lots of other like plant families or I guess you could say plant gills. But if you plant them together, they can, you don't have to use like fertilizers because just the symbiotic relationships between the plants and animals can perform all these functions without any sort of input on your part, as long as you have like, this conscious design in the beginning that you know, you're gonna put these plants that are gonna help each other in the same place. 
rather than like fields of corn that are miles and miles wide and long and you have to dump tons of chemicals on them just to be able to let them grow without pests getting in them. The idea is to use natural methods of uh, pest control. Like, for example, if you, I'm not sure exactly what plants, but uh, I know onions, if you, they can uh, repel certain insects if you plant them with other plants there. I'm not sure I need to study more, obviously, but that's the, the idea is uh, complementary planting and permaculture. So um, thinking about that being the second goal, the third goal that we, you know, kind of thought the ideal healthy society um, would be promoting would be the general health of the human body and human mind. So just like Kevin was sharing before us, you know, there's a lot of different aspects of that. Um, whether it be, you know, the physical house, the ideal community would have, you know, people from the Western healthcare system that can help in providing medical care. Um, but it also incorporates some of those complementary and alternative practices, you know, the use of hands-on healing practices and energy healing practices, um, herbal medicine, nutritional medicine, uh, the massage, yoga, all of these things that contribute to the wellness of the body um, and of the mind and of the spirit. Uh, and then also looking at the aspect of the um, emotional wellness and looking at emotional therapies, emotional counseling, spiritual counseling as being very important to incorporate into this, this ideal intentional communities because people really have been damaged. Their consciousness has been damaged up until this point by the aggressive practices um, that are kind of systematic. Um, so in understanding that we do need to heal from those things as well. Um, so the ideal intentional community would also incorporate all of those pieces. Uh, the, fourth, the fourth goal, again, is related to the passions of the spirit. So that can be any type of things that ignite a person's spirit. The intentional community would incorporate those you know, group gatherings for things like meditative practices, group prayer, group song, group dance, all of those things that, that light up the spirit, that, that light up the heart. Um, that can also involve any types of arts in general. So any types of passions that bring about um, within the visual arts or graphic arts or anything hands-on would need to be pursued in these communities because that is what makes us come alive. That's what makes our spirits come and then finally, the last goal that we found for these ideal intentional communities is around education exchange. And that's the voluntary you know, exchange of information, of ideas, but as well as you know, the voluntary exchange of services and tools. Um, an intentional community <laughs> would, would need to be um, conscious of having uh, an opportunity for these type of exchanges and to have it happen in a way that is voluntary. So the gift economy, this idea that these um, these practices and ideas would be exchanged voluntarily, but then somebody could step up after and say, I really appreciate that you've met this need for me, and I really appreciate the way that you've done it, and I can return that appreciation to you by giving you a gift of my time or my services or some sort of goods that I'm able to produce. These are all ways that we can kind of encourage this exchange in a voluntary way. So, with that kind of mouthful, um, we just wanted to kind of share about uh, Saba Cooperative, which is a um, model of a community based on these ideas, um, based on these goals that we're in the process of developing right now. Um, we are the members. Um, but we are looking to have more members join us. We are preparing to purchase a property. We're very interested in a property right now in Orange, New Hampshire. Um, but also the Grafton area, where we're also looking for some options for housing in that area too. Um, looking for you know 10 or more acres of land to really begin doing this community. Uh, we have some potential sponsorship with the Earth Island Institute. We're with that. Um, 
but we have uh, pamphlets, we've got uh, papers to hand around about the Saba Cooperative. We're very much interested in hearing from people about if you have any um, of your own expertise or any of your own skills that you would like to donate to help us to contribute in any way, we would love to hear from you. We would love to gather information on you and, and what you have to be able to contribute. Um, we want to offer a welcome to everyone. And, and we're also open for questions either now if we've got time um, or afterwards we'll be available for questions too. Uh, our website address is on the page that's handed around, as well as our email address. Uh, yeah, any questions? So, uh, Max Abramson from Seabrook, uh, on my town's budget committee. Um, I guess my question is, uh, we've been you know, talking upstairs about uh, about the growing season in New Hampshire, and obviously on the Free State Project form, a lot of people have been asking, well, you know, isn't the land kind of tough, and aren't the winters kind of long? Uh, about, about how many acres of land does it take to produce food for people, and not just food, but I mean just just everything, hay and building houses, and just kind of being self-sufficient. If you're just trying to be completely self-sufficient off the land, about how many acres per person? Mm -hmm. um, what? I'm not sure exactly how many acres per person we need, but I know that uh, there's, there's this is one thing you can look up on the internet about uh, it's like I think it's called aquaculture, and it's like somebody grows some ridiculous number of thousands of pounds of food on a single acre by using a permaculture system that integrates um, growing fish and uh, plants kind of in the same space. Aquaculture is aquaponics. Aquaponics, aquaponics. yes, aquaponics. So it's aquaculture and hydroponics. Uh, a good friend of mine is doing that very successfully, and if you want to talk more about that. Also, Sava um, does have you know, plans because of that aspect of things, of recognizing that the growing seasons are very short, um, at least the outdoor growing seasons are very short in this region. Um, our, our mission is really to incorporate a lot of greenhouse space as well, so a lot of enclosed growing space that we can extend the growing seasons um, to be able to meet the needs of the Basically, a greenhouse on the southern side of every structure for, for heat gain and for more growing space. Evan, Evan to work on yours and Max's uh, greenhouses, this, you're going to the property, probably going to the cats. Just to let you know, already in graphing, we have more articles for solar fixtures, for greenhouse fixtures, for bile, wood, straw, chip burning fixtures to heat. We're trying to get them not to be cats. You're not into the voting, I wish you were, but we are trying that in Grafton. You know the community we have here. Um, I hope it goes through. Well, thanks. And our, so, so that I can put it in a warrant that we don't need both anymore. But. Yeah, and we're, our intention is to operate as a nonprofit. So we're going to try to avoid the taxes as much as possible by um, operating as a nonprofit. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we can completely avoid it, totally, at least not at this point. I was going down the road with more of your vision. Other structures and things that are being passed, now stolen money, let's just say. <laughs> this, the money they're stealing from us, the millions that are ours from our labor, we're trying to get three of them off now working small. We'd love to have you up in order so you can grab them to help with them. Yeah, I was wondering if there were other intentional communities that you guys were using as a sort of model, and uh, I imagine you guys have done research into that. Is there like a specific, different communities you guys are maybe basing it off of? Yeah, well, I know we're really inspired by the D Acres model and Bardo Farm, both really big inspirations. Um, yeah, and then a few we've, that we've seen just mainly over the internet haven't actually experienced firsthand, but trying to gather a lot of ideas from a lot of different sources. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Well, I'm unclear on the concept. Uh, your idea, ideal, is have an intentional community with communications and and you know spiritual uh, connections between the people there. Why don't you go to a, a 
this would make more people. Congratulations. Um, well, the idea is that we, we would like to be out in the woods, kind of in a, in a, a rural area, a place but that's that, like away from people. Away it from is, but then people will, you know, people can come and connect with us there. Oh, so you're going to make like a lighthouse yeah. for people are up. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're basically looking at it as just understanding that a lot of times when people are looking for something like this, they're, they're looking to do so because they're trying to get away from the systems that are already currently established, that, you know, maybe away from the city life or away from just that um, kind of suburb life and getting to, back to the natural or back to um, these uh, places that aren't, you know, so connected to those worlds, almost like a different world that can be, you know, visited for a short period of time or stayed for extended periods of time, almost like um, uh, a health a healthcare retreat or um, a place where somebody would go to get well if they weren't. And then, again, this would be a community as well with members that could stay long term. Mm -hmm. Assuming you stay connected by the internet. Yeah, every part of track Maybe not yet. There's, yeah, there's internet and graphic. <laughs> so could you talk about what you think is, is what you're trying to get away from? Or uh, what, what you're rejecting as the, the rest of the world? Uh, or what you want to... I think the main principle... Filter out of your community? It, it was it's aggression, aggression in general, but I think it's also you know all of those underlying practices that tend to be you know coercive or you know forceful um, that don't involve voluntary consent of all um, contributing peoples, um, as well as you know just those general practices like Evan was talking about about moving away from the unhealthy aspects of the systems as they currently are and trying to create healthier. Um, food products, trying to create healthier land that we're living on. Um, and then just that general health of people. I think people are today living in um, very sick bodies and very sick minds. Um, and I do think there's a large piece of that that has to do with the kind of systematic, you know, use of aggression and everything that goes on. I think it's a lot about consensus decision making. Yes, that is absolutely yeah, that's that's the idea is that uh, any decisions uh, will be made by unanimous consent of all the members, um, and that comes and that also includes like uh, what guests will come and stay, you know, any sort of decisions about you know the property. Do so you have any experience with that? Um, some experience with it. I think to experience. Uh, unless there's anything else, uh, thank you for your time.